In this video, we're going to take a look at matrices and see how we may find some questions on the ACT that deal with matrices. The matrices are a topic that, um, unless you're in an Algebra 2 or pre-calculus class, you may not have had a lot of experience with matrices. Matrices do show up in some of your earlier classes but you may not get a lot of time working with them, but still that doesn't mean that this isn't a, a topic that you cannot learn what you may see on the ACT and be able to work some of these questions. So just because you haven't had maybe a lot of time in a particular math class working on it, don't just say, I'm not gonna be able to do any of these problems. You can, and I'm going to try to help you see some of the questions you might could see with a matrix. A matrix is just an array of numbers, and you may think, what does that really mean? It is a set of numbers that are set up in rows and columns. You have, it's almost like a set of number, a set of numbers that go together. The elements, we call them the elements of a matrix, are in different positions of the rows and columns of a matrix. If you've ever had a computer science class or if you're going to take a computer science class, you may talk about arrays and how you store numbers in particular um, positions so that you know where that, that value is. They're somehow related values. Now we can add and subtract matrices as long as they're the same size. If they have the same number of rows and the same number of columns. And what I always remember, when you're given the dimensions of a matrix, you give them rows by columns, R by C. If you've ever heard of an RC cola, that's the way I remember it. R times C, rows come first, then columns. So let's take a look at these examples. These are three different matrices, A, B, and C. Both A and B are three by three matrices. They have three rows and three columns. Rows go across columns go up and down. The C matrix is a three by one. It has three rows and one column. Three rows with one column. Three different elements in that particular matrix there. So let's look at what we can do. We can add or subtract A and B, but we cannot add like A and C or B and C because those are two different dimensions. We have the three by three for A and B and the three by one of matrix C. So we can add A and B and all we want to do is add each component. So if I'm looking at A, position one one of A is the value one in that upper left corner. Position one one, row one, column one of B is two in the upper left column. Same thing for subtracting. Instead of adding each component, we're going to subtract each. So when we add the components for A plus B, we just add across. 1 plus 2 gives us 3. 3 plus 3 gives us 6. 6 plus 4 gives us 10. That is the first row, that 3, 6, 10, of the matrix A plus B. And we continue that for each component, subtracting the same. Instead of adding the components, we subtract them. So that's adding a matrix. Let's look at the same matrices again. We can also multiply a matrix by a value, a real number. This is called scalar multiplication. And in the first case, we have 2A. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply each component of A by 2. When we have multiplication of matrices, that gets a little bit more complicated. And we don't often see multiplication on of matrices on the ACT. There are some applications, and some of the applications have to do with looking at the dimensions of the matrices and seeing if it's even possible. When we're multiplying matrices, we'll look at that here. But first, when we look at the 2 times A, we just multiply each of those components of A, each of those elements, by 2 and we get that resulting same dimension, a three by three. When we do the A times C, now we can multiply these because when you do multiplication, you multiply each, the row of the first matrix, so the one, three, six, we're gonna multiply those components and add them up with the column three, two, four of C. Row one, 
times column one of C. We'll multiply one times three plus three times two plus six times four. And when we add those up, it should give us 33. And then we continue that with row two and row three, and that will give us the other components. If you need more practice on multiplying matrices, I would encourage you to use your math book, ask your teacher. You can look up for some more help online, but we really don't see a lot. I don't want to say you'll never see matrix multiplication. The, the biggest thing is knowing what matrices you can multiply together. But it wouldn't be a bad idea if you want to go a little bit more advanced and just to make sure this would be one of those topics that you could go a little deeper if you'd like to, but we don't see it that often. One other application for matrices that you might see on the ACT is the determinant of a matrix. And we have seen different forms of this question. Sometimes they just give you a matrix and say find the determinant. Other times they will give you this formula right here. And here's what the determinant of a matrix is. You're going to be given a two by two matrix in this case. We can find determinants of others, but I just have never seen anything beyond a two by two on the ACT. In this case, we have the formula. Determinant is given by, it looks like the absolute value bars around the A. So you just be familiar, or you may see DET in front of A. And that's equal to just AD, we multiply across the diagonal, minus BC. So multiply the diagonals and subtract. And that gives us the determinant. So the determinant of a matrix is going to be a number, a value. It's not a matrix. That's not what you get as an answer. You get a number, a magnitude. So let's take a look at an ACT type example dealing with a matrix. Give this one a try and we'll come back and work it together. The question said if the determinant of the matrix that we're given here is 15, what is X? This particular question did not give us the definition or the formula for finding the determinant, so we need to do that on our own. What we just went over, we can take the diagonals, multiply those, so x times x minus 1 times 1, and we set that equal to 15 because in this case they gave us the value of the determinant, so we're solving for x. So we're going to multiply and get x squared minus 1 equals 15, We'll add one to both sides and we get x squared equals 16. When we take the square root of both sides, we'll get x could be equal to negative four or positive four. And we have to take both cases of plus or minus when we take the square root. So x can be negative four or positive four, and that is answer choice E.